Today we'll be reading from Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. Our usher is going to come down the middle aisle with Bibles. If you do not have a Bible or know someone who needs one, please feel free to take one home with you. It's our gift to you today. If you did grab one of the Bibles, uh, our verses will be on page 857. Now please follow along as I read out loud. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers day by day those who were being saved. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. God, we pray that you... Uh, Your presence is here, God. Be with Pastor Matthew as he brings your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you may have a seat. Good morning. I'm glad that you're here. I know I already told you that, but I just really mean it. I'm glad that you're here. You know, uh, I know I made a pretty big announcement last week, and then if you follow us on social media, I reminded you that this week I had a big announcement for you, that the winner of the Super Bowl would be the second coolest announcement that you heard today. But I forgot we were baptizing when I told you that. So the su- winner of the Super Bowl will be the third biggest announcement that you hear today. I guess unless you're expecting like a kid or a grandkid. maybe There's plenty of announcements that could come. But listen, I got two exciting ones for you. First today, we get to watch somebody get baptized. And it's one of my favorite things. For somebody to stand up here. Uh, I know I do it every week. But the boldness to stand in front of a group of people and proclaim Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior is one of my favorite things. And then to get baptized outside where it's mildly chilly despite how hard we try to warm up that water. Uh, But it's a good day. But I have another announcement for you. I'm about to get to that. I know you're like, man, Matthew, just give it to us. In late 2017, early 2018, God laid it on my heart to be a church planner, to plant a church in the middle of North Peoria for the community of North Peoria. And ever since the Lord laid it on my heart, I've spent hours praying and contemplating, Lord, what do you want for this church? Lord, I'm not looking for glory, but I want to glorify you through this church. So what do you want for this church? How can we best serve you? How can I best, Lord, lead the saints in North Peoria to fund and fuel your mission here in North Peoria? You know, in last July when we moved into this new space, we, were, we really felt like we were able to finally get started as a church and start moving forward as being a church for this community. If you remember, we met in another church's building at the end of a dead-end road, and the parking situation was horrendous. And we never knew what we were going to find when we walked in, and we just said, Lord, would you give us a new space? Would you give us a space in the heart of our community where we can be established and where we could glorify you and be essential to the community? And God saw fit to give us this space. And that doesn't mean that it invalidates the work that we were doing before we got here. But we really felt like we were finally in the heart of our community, working to reach the hearts of our community. And as we continued to do this, it became clear that we needed to do things that made the most sense for the context that we were operating in. We didn't need to do things the way they did things 40 miles away, 20 miles away. We needed to do the things that made the most sense to reach the people that were right here. For the people in our church and to reach the people in our community. And praise the Lord, that is exactly what we were able to do. Through our own unique ways and systems, the Lord blessed the work we were doing. And the church has continued to grow, not only deep, but also wide. And over the last few months... I have gotten wisdom from the other elders of Valley Life Church, from our sending church. And as the church has continued to grow healthy and strong, as well as deep and wide, it has become more and more clear to me, the other elders of Valley Life Church, that the thing for our church, the best thing for our church, the best thing for our community, and the best thing for the impact that we want to make on the people of North Peoria, the best thing we could do would, not remain, would be to not remain a campus-style church plant but rather become our own autonomous church 
that is essential to this community to establish ourselves as a church that is for North Peoria and this area. So, what's my big news for you? So starting next week, even though it's not official till March 1st, but starting next week, we will no longer be Valley Life Church North Peoria, but starting next week, we will be Community Life Church. We will be Community Life Church. We can celebrate that. That's good. I know it's a big news, but let me explain more. Well, I want to be a church for this area, com- comprised of people for this area. The thing that has happened is that we've grown up as we've continued to do systems and reach people and see people profess their faith in Jesus Christ and comprise the church, what's happened is that we've grown up, much like a teenager who grows up, gets a job, starts paying his own bills, eventually they move out and they grow up. What's happening is we're becoming this autonomous church and we didn't even realize it. But after talking with the other elders, it just made the most sense that the best thing for the church, for this community, would be for us to establish ourselves here as the community church for Valley Life Church. I mean, for North Peoria. So we're moving forward. We'll be Community Life Church. You may think, well, Matthew, does that change everything? Does that mean that the mission changes? That means that we're going to change how we do things? Certainly not. If this is what we have done up to this point, not much will change. But we will have one simple mission, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. The mission of Community Life Church will be this. To help people belong, be known, and find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ. To belong, be known, and find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, as we throw the logo up here, the new church logo, you might be looking, well, Matthew, talk to me about that. That seems a little, a little different. What, what are we looking at? Well, if you look, you'll see there's like a C that's kind of pointed up to the top. You'll see the L. That's community life. But obviously, it's so much more than that. It's kind of a square because it represents the four corners. And if you're in North Peoria, you know that four corners is Lake Pleasant and Happy Valley. And it's where we do all of our shopping. It's where we eat all of our meals if we're going to eat out. It's where you go here in North Peoria to do anything. It represents the heart of our community that we desire to serve. But also, at the center is this little core, this little box. And at the core of all that we do and talk about is Jesus. We want to make sure that Jesus is the center of all that we are doing. And so I know this is a big change. And I want you to know, Valley Life this morning is celebrating that yet another church plant of theirs has grown up into another autonomous church plant. And we're grateful for that. So what I want to ask us to do right now is take a second. We're going to pray Thanksgiving. Thanks for where we are, where we've been, and we'll ask God to bless where we're going. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning grateful for Valley Life Church Grateful for the work you've done through Valley Life Church and all the church plants across the valley. Grateful for the influence that they've had on this church plant. Grateful for the mentoring that I've been given. And Father, we're grateful for the work that you've done through Valley Life Church North Peoria. And we pray that you would continue to have your hand of favor upon Community Life Church. Father, we praise you. We look forward with an eager expectation of the glory that is to come as we continue to serve you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning I want to talk and spend our mo- the majority of our time walking through what this mission means to us as a church. You know, it seems fitting that coming off of First Things First, where we started back at January 1st and we said, hey, what does it mean to be a Christian? What is the gospel? We asked ourselves, what is, how should a Christian see themselves? What about the church? It seems appropriate that we would take a week to say, talk to me about our mission. Where our mission to help people belong, be known, and find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ kind of gets its roots from Acts chapter 2, which Stephen just read. See, in Acts chapter 2, the apostles, this is right after Jesus has ascended into heaven, the apostles are gathered together, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And all of a sudden, they can start talking in other languages, and they're preaching the gospel, and everybody's able to understand them. Then Peter gets up and delivers a sermon. Right in the preceding verses to what Stephen just told us, Peter delivers this sermon, and we're going to jump to the end of this sermon and look at the events that took place from there on as the church of Christ was born. See, in the middle of Acts chapter 2, we see really the first church of Christ formed. And as we talk about going off as, with a new church name, as Community Life Church, it's important. How did the first church do it? And as we prepare to embrace this mission of belong, be known, and find purpose, we want to look at, through God's word, what does that practically look like? 
So I want to pick up at the end of Peter's sermon in verse 36. It says this. Let the, all the house of the Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Maybe this is a fun little preacher thing, but in my opinion, I think this is the first time a sermon was given, and at the end of it, the pastor or preacher said, repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ to be baptized. It's like the first altar call that ever happened. I think that's kind of neat. But as we think about our mission to belong, be known, and find purpose, the first part about that I want to talk about is belong. When we say that we want to help people belong through the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is what we mean. We want them to find life in community with Jesus Christ. Want them to find their life in community with Jesus Christ. Community Life Church will be a church that helps people find their life and their identity in Christ and not in the world. We'll be the kind of church that is real clear on where life does and does not come from. We'll proudly boast that no matter how hard you search for it in the world, the world cannot provide the life, satisfaction, or contentment that our hearts so desperately long for. You know what broke my heart this morning? We came in, and I don't know if you noticed, we got like a beautiful collage of paperwork over here on the wall. When a church plant, you never know what you're going to walk into, and when you come into the gym. But I think what's happening over here, and I don't know this, but I think there are goals that little kids have written on pieces of paper. Some of them say, I want to get better at soccer. Some of them say, I want to get good grades. But there was a couple that stuck out to me as I was glancing at them. One of these kids who attends this school said, I just want to learn to do better. And another one says, I want to learn about love. A little kid somewhere said, I want to learn about love. I want Community Life Church to be the church that can answer both of those questions. That we do have a desire to be better because we think we want to just earn some sort of life, that if we just get our life together enough, that that should be enough to get us into heaven. How many times have you heard when someone passes away, well, they were a good person. Good by what standard? We know that sin equals death. And all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we know, actually, by definition, none of us are really all that good. So where does life come from? Well, life comes from Christ. And the kid who says they want to learn about love. Man, I want to tell them where love comes from. That we know that we are so loved by God that he sent his son to die in our place. That if we would put our faith in him, we would not perish but have everlasting life. John 10, 9, 11, Jesus says this, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will, be, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I want you to think about that pasture. Think about sheep. That's peace. How many of us at our hearts really feel peace in this world? Well, we weren't really meant to. But in Christ, we can know that we have peace with God. Verse 10, he says, the thief comes only to steal, steal kill, and destroy I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I want the people of North Peoria to know that they can have life and have it abundantly in Jesus because Jesus says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We, if we know that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God and we know that sin equals death, well then where do we get life? We get life abundantly in Jesus because he laid down his life for us. So as a church, we need to commit to helping people find their identity through the finished work of the cross. And through Jesus' death on the cross, the sins of the world's world have been paid for. And through the resurrection of Jesus, all those who would repent of their sins and follow him have not only, do not only have victory from death, but they have life in him. A verse that I want us to hold near and dear to us as we make this change to Community Life Church is found in Colossians chapter 1. It says this, that you who were once alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, keep in mind that's all of us. At one point we were all alienated, hostile in mind doing evil deeds. It says in verse 22, he has now reconciled you in his body of flesh in order to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach before him. You've heard me talk about this before if you've come for a while, but this is a big deal. To be alienated means you did not belong. You didn't have a seat at God's table. You weren't worthy to be a part of his family because of the sin and brokenness in your life. 
but because Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he paid for the punishment of your sins if you'd put your faith in him, you are now holy, blameless, and above reproach. What that means is you are adopted into the family of God. You belong at his table. He has brought you near to him. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter what brokenness, no matter where you came from, no matter if you fought with your spouse on the way to church this morning, you belong. You are holy, blameless, and above reproach before him. Verse 23 says, If you indeed continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all of creation under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. We will be a people that looks into the brokenness of this world and recognizes that that brokenness is a result of sin. And because of sin, we don't deserve the grace or the fellowship with our Heavenly Father because we're not worthy to sit at His table, but Jesus. You all know that's one of my favorite phrases, but Jesus. There's a vast community here in North Peoria that is desperate to hear that truth, but Jesus. They are broken and totally depraved, and there's so much sin in their life, and they've made so many mistakes, but Jesus. Let us be a church that proclaims as loud as we can, but Jesus. Because those who once did not belong due to their sin are now brought close. They now belong in the household of God and have a seat at the Father's table as one who had never sinned. So, step one of our mission is we will help others belong. We will help them find life and community with Jesus Christ. How will we know if we've done it? It's one thing to have a mission statement. But how will we know if we're doing it? How will we know? We're going to go survey everyone. Hey, do you feel like you belong? That's probably not going to work. How will we know? We will know people, are, we're helping people find a place to belong when they profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and follow him in baptism. We will be a church that leads people to salvation and then helps them take their first step of obedience through baptism. That's how we will know that we are helping others belong and find their life in Christ Jesus. We'll continue in Acts chapter 2. Peter finishes that sermon. Sermon tells them to repent and be baptized. And this is what happened. This is how that first group responded. In verse 42 it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayers. Step two of our mission is be known. To find community within the life of the church. I don't know if you've all picked up on what I'm doing here with the underlining. Community, life, church. It's our new name. This is one of my favorite verses, and I hope, my hope is, because of the First Things First series, if you rode that out with us when we talked about what are the disciplines of our faith, hopefully when you read this verse, you think prayer, Bible, church, that these are the disciplines of our faith, this is where we get it from, that the very first church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Keep in mind, they didn't have the English Standard Version back then, but the closest thing they had to the Bible was the apostles' account of Jesus and the Old Testament. And so they devoted themselves to God's Word, to the fellowship to the church, and to prayers. So I hope when you see this, you remember prayer, Bible, church, but I also want you to see how the church behaved. Looking at verse 43, it says, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. I want to challenge you right now. Look around the room. Lit literally look around the room. There's a variety of people in this room from all kinds of demographics. There's young people, less young people. I think you could say that. There's stay-at-home moms, businessmen and women. There's retired. There are some Denver Broncos fans, and there are some people who root for the wrong team. The point is this. As you look around the room, you may have nothing else in common with the person on the other side of the room from you. But here at Community Life Church, we will embrace that in Christ, we have enough in common to do life together. That if we have nothing else in common, the simple fact that you are my brother or sister in Christ is enough for me to do life with you. It's enough for me to encourage you to grow, to be encouraged by you. To pray together, to worship together, to encourage one another, to celebrate together, and to mourn together. 
The church was meant to be comprised together. I, I tell people that so much of the New Testament is filled with one another's love, one another, serve one another, do good to one another. All of this is one another's, and you can't do the one another's without the church. So we may have nothing else in common, but if the only thing we have in common is that we're both children of God, that is enough. That is the most important. And when, when it says here that they had all things in common, it means in Christ we are all the same. It's not about how much money you make, because none of us could really ever pay our way into heaven anyway. It's not really about the past you come from, because we all recognize that we were all broken by sin. And it also means that all are welcome. Let us not be a church that's surprised by who can show up to Community Life Church. If the, whatever person you think in your mind that comes to mind, like, man, what would it be like if that person came to church? Well, they're totally welcome here. Well, what about that person who's done some crazy, awful things? What about the person who's super broken by sin? What about the person who's had an affair? What about the person who's uh, squandered all their money? What about the person who's wasted it all in gambling debts, is addicted to pornography, is a racist? What about those people? All are welcome here. Because we are all broken and fall short of the glory of God. We aren't surprised by sin, but rather we run towards sin and brokenness with the grace and the hope of the gospel. Continues on, the first church, verse 45, it says, And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. The first church had real, authentic life together. When I was deployed, uh, and when I was in the army as a combat medic, when I was deployed, it was the best version of this community that I can ever find. I've heard someone say that a college dorm room, a dorm is pretty much the same way, but you'll see. When I was deployed, I, I shared a room with 50 other men. Keep in mind, I was in the middle of the desert over there, so it was like 125 degrees most days. Um, you got to shower like every third day. So I shared a room with 50 other men who were also sweating and stinky. It was a wonderful experience. But something powerful happened when we were deployed over there. You didn't really have to ask someone if they were okay. Because you knew. You knew them. You knew if your brother was off. You knew if he just wasn't quite up to snuff. You could tell if something was weighing heavy on his mind. Why? Because we did life together. We ate together, we talked together, we worked together. You didn't have to wonder what we were doing that day because we were all on the same mission. So it wasn't really a question of like, hey Jim, what are you going to do today? Well, I don't know, Matthew, the same thing that you're going to do. We're going to follow our orders and execute the mission that's been given to us. I want you to think of this church the exact same way. I want you to do life that intimately. That when you don't know somebody here at this church, I want you to walk across the room, introduce yourself, and say, Hi, my name is Matthew, but your name's not Matthew. Use your name, not my name. I want you to walk across the room, introduce yourself, start building community, because I want to tell you the church was meant to be a lifeline for you. I've talked about it plenty of times, but I want Community Life Church to be like a forward operating base when I was deployed. Because at the forward operating base, that was the safe place. That was the, the best place we could be, because it's there that we got to sleep it's there that we got to eat, however good the food may have been. We got to sleep, we got to eat, but we got to call home. It's where we rested. It's where we got to kind of let our guard down a little bit. I want you to use the church the same way. Let this be a place where your soul is refreshed by the preaching of God's word, by opening up his word, by praying together and worshiping together. Let this be a place where you can let your guard down. You don't have to get it right the other six days of the week when you're out there trying to present yourself in a certain kind of way, but when you come in here, you can be your authentic self. I want you to use the church. I want you to use the church. We've said for a long time as we planted this church that we're not going to use people to build the church, but we want to use the church to build people. I want you to think about that. I don't want to use you to build this church, but I want you to use this church to grow yourself. I want you to be intimately known by this church community. Because it's in community that we do all the one another's of the Bible. It's in community that somebody will love you enough to call out your sin and say, hey, I don't think that's good for you. It's in the community of the local church that somebody will call out the grace in you. 
I just heard a story just yesterday. One of my community group leaders was telling me that of this story of somebody in their community group after last week's giving sermon that really felt convicted and moved by that. I told the community group leader, man, that's grace in them. That's the Holy Spirit working in them. It's in the church that we call out sin, but we also call out grace. It's also in the community of the church that we push each other to grow. Proverbs 13, 20 say the wise, hanging out with the wise, get wiser. When you hang out with a companion of fools, it leads to ruin. It's in the community of the church that we push each other to grow. Iron sharpening iron. It's in the community of the church that you have people overwatching your soul. We said before, one of the reasons to join a church is because you have an elder or a pastor who is praying for your soul, guarding your soul. Hebrews 13 says that I, as the pastor of this church, will give an account for my flock. Get known so that there's somebody who is praying for your soul on a regular basis. Be known in the community of the church so that we can bear up one another's burdens. I think in the last month, I've seen three meal trains go out through this church to the members of this church. One, because we're popping out babies like crazy. But also, to just bear up other burdens when there's somebody who's down and out. We want to help come alongside them as a church. When there's people who are struggling, we want to bear up one another's burdens. When we think about the word compassion, that literally means to suffer with. Where better to suffer with people than in the community of the church, people who will lift that burden, push you closer to Jesus. There was a time in Trace and I's life when we were getting ready to adopt our first child where it all could have gone horribly wrong. The birth mom could have totally changed her mind, and we would have been out almost $25,000, and we would have had to wait years to try to adopt again. But the church community came alongside us and said, we have you. You put your full heart into this process, and if it all falls apart, we'll be there to pick up the pieces. There were people coming over as we were waiting to find out what was going to happen, just doing puzzles with my wife, calling me and saying, Matthew, how are you really doing? The church is where we bear up one another's burdens, but it's also where we encourage each other on mission. Nobody out there in the world is going to ask you, hey, how's it going talking to your friends about Jesus? Nobody's going to ask you, hey, how's it going being a light in your workplace for the gospel? But at church, we can do that. In fact, we're commanded to. In Hebrews 10, it says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Who stirs up one another to love and good works? The church. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We were meant to encourage each other, push each other closer to Jesus, as we see the day drawing near. So, we want to help people be known as they find community in the local church. How will we know if we've done it? Membership. People choosing to comprise the church. People choosing to bear up responsibility for the church. People saying, you know what? This church isn't perfect. This church has weird murals on the wall. This church has to set up chairs every week. They have to do pipe and drape. Matthew makes awful jokes about the Denver Broncos nearly every week. But I'm going to throw my hat in with this church because I believe that it's through the local church that we, com- that we encourage one another It's in the local church that we call out sin and grace. It's where I'll be cared for. It's where I'll be known. It's where I'll be encouraged and pushed towards mission. So how will we know if people are really becoming known through the local church? Membership. They'll throw in and say, I'm in. Let's do this together. I'll bear up the responsibility for the church. Then in verse 47 of Acts chapter 2, it says this. In praising God and having favor with all the people, And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. The last step three of our mission statement is to find purpose. We want to help people find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, we do that. We want to make Christ known as we do life in our community as the church. I have a buddy. um, He plants a church over in Surprise down the road. It's called Asante Church. And before they leave every week, he has them say, be the church and display the kingdom. If ever I was going to steal a mantra, that might be it. But I just told you where it came from, so I don't think I'll steal that one this time. But he said, be the church. Display the kingdom. That's what I want for us. I want us, as we go out into our community, to be the church. To do life in our community as the church. To make Christ known. Because when we seek to do the first two aspects of our mission statement, well, the third becomes kind of obvious. If we really believe that anyone can belong through Christ... 
And if we really desire that other people would be known and we want to push other people to love and good works, well, we'll naturally tell people about Jesus. Because the most loving thing that we could ever do is tell somebody about Jesus. So let Community Life Church be a church that displays Christ in the circles we operate in. Let me tell you this. God has you in the family that you're a part of, the community you live in, the job that you work at, the gym that you attend. I even had a guy this week, I was talking to him. He won't mind if I tell who it is. I was talking to Monty today, the other day, and he was telling me that he has a group of golf guys. And he says, they're not necessarily like gospel guys. They're not really talking about things of Jesus. He says, but when I go out and golf, I just try to be an example. I try to show them Christ as I'm golfing. I'm assuming that that's because he wants to show them that you can have grace and even in the middle of utter brokenness. I don't know about Monty's golf game. I just assume that maybe it's a little broken. So even in the, golf, the group of golf guys you have, God has you exactly where he needs you so that you can be a light for him. You are where you are to be a light in the middle of darkness and to point others towards Christ. I want you to think about that. The family that you're a part of, if you are a parent, God has you in that family to be a light of the gospel for your children. If you are a spouse, it's so you can be a light of the gospel for your spouse. In your workplace, I don't care what job you have, God intends for you to use that job that he gave you to, be a glory, to bring him glory, to point others to Jesus through your work, through your community. Even today as we get to baptize Haley, Haley came because Tyler and Melissa invited them to church a few months ago at this point. I met Haley and Derek at a friend's giving at my neighbor's house. God intends for us to be a light in our communities, to just be a neighbor who loves Jesus. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that every one of you every day needs to go out and have a gospel conversation and evangelize everybody. If you want to do it, I'll support you. I'm in. I'll go do it with you. But more realistically, here's what I want for you. I want you to get really disciplined in your faith. I want you to prayer Bible your church, prayer Bible church your life away. Be committed to those things. And just be a man or woman of God, fiercely, unapologetically. Because when we start living like that, the rest of the world starts to go, hey, there's something different about you. When you go through struggles, it looks a little different. How did you get that? What is that? And when they ask, we get to go, well, it is hard. But Jesus. We get to say, but Jesus. At Community Life Church, we will find our purpose in living out the Great Commission in the spirit of the Great Commandment. I know that's a wordy phrase, but I want us to live out the Great Commission. To go, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them for the glory of God while we love others. Because we know the most loving thing we can do is share the gospel. Now I skipped over a section in Acts chapter 2 I want to go back to. Acts chapter 2, verse 39 says, For, the, for the, the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this cro crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. When Peter finishes preaching this first sermon, 3,000 people repented of their sins and put their faith in Jesus Christ. This is where I like to say hashtag preacher goals. I wish I could do that. No, I don't. Let me tell you why. <laughs> when we say we find purpose, that's totally evangelism. We want people to recognize that they have a great commission placed on their life by Jesus Christ. To go, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them. So we want, we want the find purpose portion of our mission to totally be evangelism and mission. But it's also building the church. We want to grow to be healthy and strong in the Lord and turn around and discipling someone else to be healthy and strong. Because if you think about it, when 3,000 people come to believe, that's 3,000 people who now need to grow in the wisdom of the Lord. That's 3,000 people who need to be taught how to prayer Bible church. That's 3,000 people who need to learn how to put their faith in God and walk in grace, walk in forgiveness. So when we talk about belong, be known, and find purpose, the other part of find purpose is to build the church. God desires for the church to grow. This church and other local churches. Because it's through the church that the manifold wisdom of God is displayed. It's through the church that people grow strong in their faith. And so what this means 
is that as we grow healthy and strong, we need to turn around and disciple someone else to be healthy and strong. So if I think about it, how will we know if we are helping people find their purpose? Well, two things. One, we'll start seeing other people baptizing other people. My goal for this church is not that I would be the primary baptizer in this church. That's not my goal. My goal is that each of you would get to experience the feeling of getting your hands wet as you baptize somebody that you helped lead to the Lord, that the Lord used you to bring them towards salvation. That's my hope for you. That's my hope for Community Life Church. Let, may I be the least baptizing person in this church. We will know that we are helping people find purpose when we see other people baptizing their friends, living on mission. But we will also know that we are seeing people find their purpose as we see members stepping into leadership to build the church. To say, I am growing healthy and strong, and it's my turn to turn around and help build somebody else healthy and strong. And you might be thinking, Matthew, that's great, but I'm not healthy and strong yet. Well, you'll never get good at discipling until you start trying to disciple someone. If you've, if you've repented of your sins, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, and you know you are forgiven by him, that's enough to start walking with somebody else and helping them grow. So we will know that we're helping people find purpose when other people start baptizing their friends and members step into leadership to build the church. I know it's a big change to go from Valley Life Church North Peoria to Community Life Church, but this will be our mission. We will be a church that helps people belong, be known, and find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And maybe this is your first time with us. And you're like, man, Matthew, you threw a lot at me. It's my first time attending Valley Life Church North Peoria, and it's my last time, apparently. Hey, but I want you to know, if you're here today and it is your first time, I'm glad that you're here. And I want you to know that, you can, that in Jesus, you can totally belong, be known, and find purpose in your life. Because you are loved. You are cherished. And God wants something for you. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For he sent his son in the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. I need you to know when it says, for God so loved the world, you are the world. You are the one whom God loved so much that he laid down his life. He went to the cross and paid the punishment for our sins. So I have to ask you, if you're not a yet a believer, if you're not yet would say that you are a Christian, like Peter did at the end of his sermon, I want to ask, will you repent of your sin? Will you admit, God, I know that I am broken. I know that I'm totally sinful. Will you repent of your sins and follow him? Say, God, please forgive me of my sins, and I want to follow you. If you will, you are a child of God. You are adopted into God's family, completely forgiven, holy, blameless, and above reproach, and you can have that today. But Community Life Church, I'm going to start calling you that now. Community Life Church, I'm convinced and convicted that this is exactly what God has called us to do as a church for this community. And so while this church may be, and I hope is a blessing to you, it was never intended to just be a blessing to you. It was intended to be a blessing for all the people who are not here yet. This church was meant to be a gift for this community from God with the offering of true life in Christ. And so as much as it depends on us, let us spend now until Jesus returns helping others belong, be known, and find purpose through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your grace, for your love. Father, I thank you for this new change, this new season that we adventure into. Father, it's only through your, your grace and provision that we're ever even able to grow up to this point anyway. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We glorify you in that. And Father, I pray, as I've prayed for months now, Father, would you let this mission seep deep into the hearts of our people, that for your glory, not for our glory, not so the church would grow, Father, but for your glory, would you help us to, have, to help people belong in you, find to, to be known within your local church, Father, and to find purpose within the mission of the Great Commission, Father. Would we be a church that people can know that just as broken as they are, they're welcome here. 
And then when people get here, would be the kind of church where we can be friends about Jesus. If we have nothing else in common, God, we have you in common, and that's enough for us to do life together. And God, let us be a church that does not take your mission lightly, but boldly goes out in our community as men and women of God, being a light in the darkness, pointing people to you and for your glory. God, I pray this church would be a blessing to this community and that you would build your kingdom here and use us to do it. It's in Jesus' name that we pray.